great at following rules. When he knows what is expected of him, when he understands the task, he's confident and efficient. For his job of a model, this used to be a good trait. And in the past, Carl worked with major brands. But now the fashion industry wants to try something new. They're expecting a bit more creativity from their models. As the casting director says to Carl, it's not just about the looks anymore. Now it's about your personality. When he's asked to show even a little bit of personality, he fails. Realizing he clearly didn't make the cut, his face seems to be saying, I don't know why they didn't like me, I followed all the instructions they gave me. Even in his daily life, whenever he has to make a choice on his own, take even the smallest bit of initiative, react to the circumstances, come up with a solution, Carl is lost, helpless, he doesn't know what to do. Therefore, he tries to find someone else to tell him what to do. He's sitting in the first row about to watch a fashion show when some more important people arrive and all of a sudden everyone has to move because of them. These newcomers are given other people's seats, the best seats in the middle of the first row. Carl is left without a seat. Even in this mildly inconvenient situation, he's not ready to act according to the situation. So he asks one of the organizers where to sit. Carl follows the rules not only at his job, he does the same in his personal life. He creates these rules himself, and he swears by them. They're very important to him. He believes in equality, that all people are equal, that men and women are the same, that gender roles are a thing of the past. Yet, his everyday life proves to him that his beliefs have very little touch with reality, that they are nothing more than a utopian idea. Carl's girlfriend Yaya is also a model. She doesn't respect the rules as much as Carl. Even though she's following them on the surface, deep inside she has her own opinion about everything, which often contradicts with mainstream views. On the outside she's playing a role, while on the inside she has her own beliefs and plans. Surprisingly, doing that doesn't create any moral conflict inside her, the way it did for Norma Jean in Blonde, for example. I also did an analysis on that film. She seems to be completely unaffected by this contradiction. Yaya is not only a model, she's also a very successful influencer. She can make money by showing her lifestyle online, or rather, she creates an illusion of having a certain lifestyle in order to sell products on her Instagram. And she does it very well. Yaya poses with a plate full of pasta, yet she's not going to eat it, because she can't have any gluten. She's not even shy to admit that she fakes her life for the camera. She knows how this industry works and she accepts it. Her beliefs, values and morals are flexible. She can adapt to anything if she sees potential benefit for herself. On the island, Yaya adapts much quicker and a lot more easily than Carl. She's demonstratively respectful to Abigail their new leader. She's even scolding her boyfriend in front of Abby. Being a model and an influencer, she's trading her good looks for money and fame and also gets stuff for free. On the island, she's doing the same thing, trading what she has, Carl, for something she needs, food. I'm so good at being manipulative, admits Yaya to Carl. And apparently he enjoys it because he allows her to mess with his head all the time. She lies to him, she tells him she'll pay for the next meal, letting him think that she shares his beliefs in equality, then she pretends she didn't see the bill on the table, doesn't pay and says thanks honey, hinting that she's grateful, he's going to pay for them both. 
She dodges his questions. She can't just give him an honest answer. Instead, she shoves the money down his shirt. This action speaks louder than words. It's like she's saying, "Swallow your stupid money, you mean feminist." She gets offended. She's behaving like a child. With her behavior, she is saying, "Okay, if you don't want to pay for me, I'll pay for us." <laughs> And she's pouting her lips. Her pain demonstratively for the bill, all by herself, is done specifically to make him feel less of a man. She gets offended. He even notices that she didn't pay. Getting offended is a message for him that translates as, "You're such a petty man for even bringing these insignificant details to my attention." She walks out on him, making a scene so that other people at the restaurant would give them weird looks. She humiliates him. While doing that, she doesn't even say a word. But this gesture. Speaks for itself. Oh, we can split the bill, you know. No, 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 no. I can whip out a, a calculator. We can. No, no, okay. <laughs> Translation: Okay, we'll split the bill if you're such a petty, mean guy. Oh, I feel bad. He looks miserable, humiliated. He's also nervous. He's anxious. Why? I make more money than you. Right time to remind him of that. Now he's even more humiliated. She gaslights him. So why are you so obsessed with money? Suggesting with every phrase that he's not okay, that he's even crazy. How many glasses of wine did you have? Oh, sure. Your... Translation: Is it because you're drunk? That's why you bring this up. Sometimes she doesn't even have to use words to suggest that. She uses her eyes. The way she stares speaks louder than words. Her eyes are so expressive. I think the message she's channeling through her eyes now is, "Carl, please understand that men and women are not equal." She's trying to get her message across to Carl by using all these tricks. Yet she could have just told him. That she doesn't believe in equality. That she wants to be able to rely on her partner financially. That she doesn't find it shameful or morally wrong. So many thoughts are going through his head. He's feeling everything so deeply. He's overthinking, overanalyzing. His mind craves order and completeness. Unfinished tasks irritate him. He can't relax and just let it all go. He needs his thoughts organized, structured. He wants to get to the core of things, to understand everything, to make everything clear between them, to know what's going on. But he will never get any answers or promises from Yaya. She speaks the language of hints and tricks, and by staying in this relationship, he encourages her to keep on behaving this way with him. Yaya does everything to avoid talking about real things, money, their relationship. Their future. What if I am、um, fall pregnant? She can't be honest with him because this way she would have to reveal all her cards to him. She doesn't see Carl beside her in her future. From the very start, she decided that her relationship with Carl has an expiration date, that it's only temporary. For now, it is beneficial. It's good for business. And she's attracted to him physically, so why not? Yes, he has these weird feminist views, but it's okay. I'll work on it and make him change his mind. Wouldn't hurt to also save a bit of money while I'm with him. She knew that eventually she'll end up with an older man by her side, someone wealthy. She'll become someone's trophy wife. For Yaya, everything is a transaction. She accepted this truth into her heart a long time ago, and it made her less receptive to real human feelings. Was she ever in love? At least once. Was there a time when she put the person first, when she didn't think of potential benefit for herself? Yeah, I think it's unsexy to talk about money. I don't want to sleep with my best friend. The way she said it was so simple, so honest. She doesn't want equality in their relationship. This should have been enough explaining for Carl, but it's never enough for him. 
he wants to talk and talk and explain and demand answers. It shouldn't be so complicated. At this point in time, the way they both are, they are not compatible. His beliefs contradict with hers. The physical attraction is still very strong between them. So instead of breaking up, they'll stay together. She'll continue trying to change his beliefs. And he will continue trying to make her respect him. He is afraid of losing her. And she keeps him around until she finds someone better. Carl's feminist views may not be very sexy. <laughs> I have to agree with Yaya on that. However, there's a reason why these ideas fit so well in today's world and why they are even reasonable. It seems like romantic relationships today skip a period of courtship and move straight towards partnership. Courtship is the most romantic time for a couple, the time when they make the most precious memories. A guy asks a girl on a date, gives her flowers, takes her to dinner, and pays a check. This period is not supposed to last a very long time. Its whole purpose is for the two people to get to know each other, to hold hands and go on romantic walks, and figure out whether or not they want to spend the rest of their lives together. Courtship is a step leading towards marriage. And then courtship ends, real life begins. Had it been the path Carl and Yaya taken, he wouldn't have had to worry about the bill, because husband and wife become one. They create a family, and their separate incomes become their family's income. 